Give me one second. Okay, I think we're good. Let me just make sure we're on. Um, make sure everybody can hear and see us good. All right, let me just make sure. Okay, it looks good. It looks good. Okay, hi everybody. All right, welcome back. We are here with another Profitable Entrepreneur live show. We do these every single week, 11 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Um, we do these on Zoom and we live stream straight here into the group. So you have a couple options in joining us. You can um, join us in the Facebook. You can watch us live on YouTube um, or you can hop on the Zoom and get in the room with us. It's totally up to you guys. Um, we've made it really versatile and easy for you guys to come in and join us. So Today, what I want to talk to you guys about, I'm really excited about this topic, and I don't think anybody really ever talks about this, so it's really important. Um, one of the things that um, I want to talk about today um, is the one system that I have set up in my, my programs, in my company, in my business, um, that I have my clients really put in a lot of priority on, um, that is catapulting my client results and also crushing my competition completely, um, I wanna talk about that one system. Um, I wanna share that with you because like I said, I don't think anyone else is talking about this, let alone doing it. Um, however, before I do that, I wanna kind of share what ties into it and how this all kind of comes together. When we look at the on online space, we look at coaches, consultants, service-based entrepreneurs, um, you know, CEOs, we look at done for you, done with you providers. When we're looking at the online space, most entrepreneurs end up shutting their business down within the first three years of being in business, or they'll stay in business for a very long time, like years after years after years, right? But they're not profitable. They're not making very much money, if at all. Um, and so even though they're in business, they're not profitable in their business. Um, and the reason that this happens to so many entrepreneurs, over 90%, um, the reason that this is happening is twofold. Uh, number one, they don't have steady ca cash flow. Um, there is no like daily sales, weekly sales, regular sales coming into the business. And there's, so there's no, there's no savings. There's no, make, make it a certain amount of money. Like there's a certain amount of cash flow coming into the business every day. So entrepreneurs are taking out loans, they're refinancing, they're going into debt. They are, you know, there's, there's just not enough cash flow to keep the business afloat. The other side of that coin that we see, um, the other side of that coin that we see Aside from the fact that so many entrepreneurs, and I'm talking over 90%, they don't have enough cash flow in their business. Now, the other thing that we see, the other side of that coin, is there's no recurring revenue. So most business owners that are in business for years and they're profitable and they're successful and they're growing their teams and they're taking time off and they're working four days a week and they're, they have multiple streams of revenue, those types of people have cash flow daily coming into their business, and they also have the recurrent revenue, meaning they can look six, 12 plus months in advance, and they know that there's a certain amount of money at a bare minimum that will come in always. And normally, they are stacking their recurrent revenue, which means every month, they start in a positive, but it also goes up every month because they're stacking their recurring revenue. Businesses that don't have these two things go out of business um, because they don't have the money to sustain the things that need to happen to get the business profitable. And so most entrepreneurs, to solve this problem, what we see is that most entrepreneurs are like, um, okay, let me, obviously, let, let's go grow the audience, and they're always acquiring new leads, which we want you doing that. That is a daily activity. You absolutely should do that. Um, but generating leads and just acquiring new leads all the time is, isn't going to necessarily increase, increase your income, your daily cash flow, or your recurring revenue if there's these other things that are not in place, right? Like just filling up your audience is not like, I'm going to generate sales because I grew my audience by this much. There are other things that need to happen. So entrepreneurs are out acquiring new leads every single day, which you should do. Um, then we see them doing multiple, multiple offers when they don't have one profitable offer yet. 
So they're out like, oh my God, let me get all these offers. Let me do all these like live videos. Let me push out all this content. So we see entrepreneurs who aren't even generating 5, 10K a month on every social platform, everyone that's out there. They're creating content um, like seven, eight, 10 plus pieces per week, if not more. They're just funneling content. Most of it is sales, which means most of it is buy my thing, check out my thing, sign up for my thing, apply for my thing, like just a lot of selling only. And there's a lot of like urgency and push around money, 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 buy my thing and generating a sale. Most business owners, over 90%, believe that constant content pushing, constant pitching, and just keep adding anybody, just everybody to our group or our email is going to generate sales. And sadly, over 90% of those entrepreneurs find that that is not a working strategy. And then in fact, they're going into debt. They're on the verge of shutting the business down because they are not generating cash flow. They do not have recurrent revenue, yet they are doing all these things. They're putting in all this time, effort, and all this uh, energy toward putting out content, going live, um, selling this, selling that, creating new offers all the time, creating new trainings all the time, giving away free PDFs, and just funneling all kinds of people into this group or email list. And then their idea is by doing that, I will create more sales, right? So the way that, that over 90% of entrepreneurs look at business is if I just have a whole bunch of people, I can just pitch them my stuff and I'll make a ton of money. I don't even have to really do anything. I just need lots of people and lots of different offers for those people. And that is why over 90% of businesses go out of business in their first three years, or they struggle for years and years in their business to get to 5K even or 10K a month. Um, so the reason I share that is because I want you to understand when I get ready to share this one system that has given, has set my clients up for success, and I'm talking in leaps, and um, has also crushed my competition, which means in a very saturated, crowded space, which it is today, um, I stand out. Meaning that when I have sales conversations or people are, are coming into my space and they're uh, coming into my content and they're watching my things and they're listening to the podcast and we're having a conversation, 80%, they already want to buy from me and work with me. But 100% is once we start having a conversation, they choose me over my 300 plus competitors. I would say probably 3,000, thousands of people who do what I do, right? There's a thing that I do. There's several systems I have, but this one is one of the biggest reasons why they choose me over all these other people amongst other things. But I want to share that, but I wanted to first tell you what we see in the industry happening and why over 90% of businesses won't even be here in 2023, um, or they're going to be in severe debt and they're going to have to shut down or go work for someone else or get a job. And the reason is because they are so focused on ramping up sales, ramping up sales, ramping up sales, selling, 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 fill my program, fill my program, fill my program. And the problem with this is that, yes, you need to grow your audience every day. You need to fill your program every day and you need to generate sales every day. 100%, absolutely. But when that's all you do and you're not even doing it effectively, then on the other side, you have client remorse or buyer's remorse. You have people who make payment and then they want out. You have people who get halfway through your program, don't do the work, and then they want to quit, right? No fault to you. They don't want to do the work. They're not doing the work, so they're not getting the result, obviously, right? Um, you have clients who are so shiny object that they come into your stuff and they're like, okay, I did this three times. It didn't work. Like, uh, what's another strategy? Give me a different way. Or I'm going to go invest in this and I'm just going to do all of this. And, and never mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. And they're just all over the place. And typically, if you look at their history, most of those people have been in business for years and they're still not where they want to be because they keep doing that. They repeat the thing that is not serving them or working for them. And so funneling people into an audience and then just selling them, it doesn't really mean anything for your success. You might make some sales or you might get like, you might have a good launch or something like that or a good month or maybe a good quarter, right? 
but there's zero consistency. There's no predictability. There's no steady cash flow that you can bank on. And there's no recurring revenue that you can count on for years to come. And so businesses cannot survive when those things are not in place. So the one system that I really want to encourage you to put way more focus and attention on is, and, and this is going to this is going to require you to take a step back for a minute. And instead of being so focused on your goals and your agenda and your money and your sales and your stuff, this is actually going to require you to completely detach from that for a second. And you're going to have to think about absolutely nothing and no one but your clients. You literally have to not even think about yourself. You do not think about you. You don't think about your family. You do not think about your goals. You do not think about your sales. You stop all of that thought process for a moment and you have to go outward because all that other stuff is internal. That's all your stuff and nobody cares about your stuff. So that doesn't, that's not servant, right? You have to go outward and outward meaning that you need to think about your clients. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, and if you've been in business for even six months, then you probably understand that acquiring a new client is going to cost you more time, money, and energy tenfold than it is to just renew or ascend a current client. Okay. And what I mean by that is the time, energy, and money that it takes to go out and find just one person to buy from you is a whole lot more than it is to already be working with a client and have them renew with you or have them graduate into your next program with you, ascend, right? You already have the client. You already did the work. They're already right there. They already know, like, trust you, and they're buying from you. They're already there. But over 90% of business owners and entrepreneurs do not have good retention. Some don't have any, meaning nobody's renewing with you. They come in, they do the thing, and they're out. You're replacing all the time. And over 90% of entrepreneurs do not have an ascension plan. They do not have a next step. And if they do, they don't talk about it. So their clients don't even know the pathway. So what happens is they come in your program, they might get some traction results or they may not, depending on how you have things structured and designed in your program. They may or may not, but guess what? Halfway through their time with you, maybe a little less, they're already thinking about the room they want to put themselves in next their goals for, for coming up next and who do they think could help them with that. And nine point, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, they're thinking that in their head and they're not thinking about you because you haven't even shown them from day one that there is another way, that there's a next step, that there's a path. So they're not even thinking about you, even though they're in your program and they're loving you. They're thinking about, okay, what is my next investment? What's the room I want to be in? What do I want to, like, what is my next goal? And let me go find that person that's going to help me do that. They're not even thinking about you because you have not educated them from day one and shown them that this is your multi-year program, meaning that this is your pathway in the first six months or the first year. Here's what we're going to accomplish together. It's what it's going to look like. And then, hey, when you get to this point, we have this next step. You'll move here and we'll do this together for this amount of time, right? It, so what happens is you have short-lived sales. You work really, 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 really hard for a really, really, really long time. You get a really small amount of sales and then they last for a very short time. Then you go do that again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. You just keep doing that. So the number one system that you need to have in place and you need to give way more attention to is not your sales and your audience and your goals. It is the onboarding system for your clients. And here's what I'm gonna tell you about this. I'll talk about the onboarding system, why this is so critical and why this will solve all these other problems we've been talking about. But the thing that I want you to understand is this is not a one and done strategy. In fact, nothing is a one and done strategy. Everything that I teach my clients and everything that I'm doing in my own company, it is a multi 
multi-year process. And what I mean by that is for as long as you are operating a business, you are improving and making tweaks and making things smoother, simpler, better, faster, more effective, more efficient the whole time. There's never, ever, ever, ever going to be a one and done strategy or a thing that you're going to do in your business and it never needs to be revisited or touched again. That does not exist. Uh, I work with multiple seven figure. I work with millionaires and this does not exist. You are probably every 90 days making improvements in your systems within your programs even if it is just small things. So when it comes to the onboarding process, this is something that it will evolutionize over the years of you being in business. So I have changed my onboarding process over my 20 years of being in business more times than I can tell you. And actually I cannot tell you, it's been so many times. And the reason for this is not, oh, because I'm distracted or I can't get my shit together. The reason that it, it changes is because times change. People buy today way different than they did five years ago, prior to even two years ago, uh, 10 years ago. People do not buy the same way today as they did then. Um, people also, people also do not, um, people also do not, um, I don't want to say that they don't make decisions as fast, but people just buy differently today. And Buyer's remorse happens fast, like faster than ever before. Like I'm talking 24 to 48 hours. As soon as someone joins your program or your offer, they sign up to work with you, they make the payment and they sign that contract. As soon as that happens, the next 24 to 48 hours are critical. This is where they're either going to dive in, get excited, um, be fully bought in and immersed in the time with you and ready to go all in or they're going to question everything they just did. They're going to be like, I, you're going to get emails or you're going to get boxers or text messages. I think I should cancel. Do you think I could do this? I don't know. I don't know. Like basically backtracking, second guessing everything and wanting their money back. They want to cancel and get out quick because they're freaking out. And so the problem with this is that if your clients are not set up for success and the, the, the onboarding system is just one important system. There's others as well throughout your whole program, but this one is the most critical because it is what will decide if this person is going to follow through with their commitment for the length of the time, or if they're going to back out and you're going to lose a whole bunch of sales that you just got. Also, the onboarding process, if it isn't structured right, okay, and we'll talk about what is not an onboarding process in a minute, but if it isn't structured right, you're not going to have renewals. No one in your program is going to renew with you. Nobody. And they're definitely not going to ascend into your next program, which means you now have to replace that client. Okay? You now have to replace them. And we already talked about how replacing clients all the time is going to cost you way more time, money, and energy than just going above and beyond and serving your current clients. Because from that, from you doing that and putting more attention on them than you, and by you doing that, they stay with you. They get better results in your program. They actually use and show up for the program. They renew. They ascend into your next level program, right? So we call this a client for life. They're going down this journey for multiple years with you. Um, and then they will refer. They will gladly send you referrals left and right. So that doesn't even work for you. That's not even work for you. Every single one of your clients knows at least two people in their audience or has at least two people in their audience that they could refer that, that would buy and invest in your offer and join your program. So look at each client you have right now and multiply. It's two for each one. They each have that. And if they send those people to you, they'll buy your program. You didn't even have to do anything. It was an introduction and it's a hot introduction because it's coming, it's a referral from someone they trust. They know, like, and trust them. So they almost come to you ready to buy right now. Um, and so your, your clients are not referring anybody to you um, if they are not having success in your program. And when I say having success, I'm not talking they join your program, they do no work, and in a week they're making a million dollars. I'm talking about success overall and progress. 
meaning their mindset is growing. They're building the muscle of resilience and consistency, clarity, confidence, right? They are showing up in the program and they're doing the work and they're getting the results. They're having progress. They're learning things that they need to learn. They're building skill sets they don't have, right? When they join your program or come work with you, they don't have these things. That's why they're here. So they're building those things. They are um, becoming more independent, responsible. They're learning how to sell and actually get results in their, their life and in their business. And they're progressing forward consistently, right? So the way that you onboard your clients, that first 24 to 48 hours, it's everything. It's everything. It's like that first impression, right? If they, if you are communicating with someone and you are like all in on them and you're like DMing them and sending them videos and audios and you're like going back and forth with them for days, hours, weeks, whatever it is to get them in your program. And then when they give you their money and they join your program, the, all of that stops and you fall off the face of the earth and they're just thrown into a curriculum. That's not an onboarding process. You will lose sales that way, right? And also what is not an onboarding process is here's a welcome email, join the Facebook group and here's a membership. Go have fun. Let me know if you need anything. That's not an onboarding process. That's not, it's not an effective onboarding process. So what you want to be thinking, and I'll share a little bit about what we do, what we've been doing. And in fact, right now in this very second, right now, this very, very second, we are for, I don't know how many times. We are now making changes and improvements to our onboarding process literally as we speak. The one that we had before worked, but it wasn't like this. This is an evolution. Like we've never had an onboarding process like what we do right now. Um, it's going to change the game. And we've had good onboarding processes. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what this looks like and then you need to think about your clients. This is where you have to get out of your own stuff. You need to think about your clients and what is going to do this for them as it relates to your niche category, okay? I'm a sales coach. I'm a business sales coach. So, of course, my process looks different. So, because I'm a business coach and the number one thing I do is help my clients generate sales in a scalable, sustainable, repeatable way, because that is my specialty, the number one thing that 99.9% .9 of my business owners want is they want more revenue. They want more income, okay? That's what they want. They might not come to me for that, meaning they might come to me to be like, I'm already generating revenue. Let's work on these things. But the end outcome of working on those things is that they're going to have more revenue, right? Even more revenue. So it's always revenue. For me, when I think about my clients, I think about what is going to help them be most successful quickly, like literally as soon as they join, that's going to set them up for success right away so that I have their full undivided attention for the rest of the program. Because I'm a sales coach, I also want them to make money. In fact, I want them to make the investment back for the whole year long program within this onboarding process so that I not only have their attention for the rest of the year together, but also they are immersed. They are inspired. They are excited. They are so bought in and ready to go because they just had a phenomenal experience. They just earned their whole freaking investment back and some in many cases, right? So they're all in, they're ready to go, which means they're gonna follow the process. They're gonna indulge in it. They're gonna go all in on it. They're gonna rant and rave about it. They're gonna to wanna to be there. They're gonna to wanna to be part of this. And I've got their full undivided attention, right? From the start. Now, our previous onboarding process did not necessarily do that. And so this one we're really excited about, which I'll talk about. Um, and so you really wanna be looking at what happens, what is happening, like what is the very next thing that happens after someone gives you their money? What exactly happens next? Because if it's like throwing them into some stuff or put in a post that says, hey, welcome, congratulations, here's your steps, go do them, you might wanna change that. You might wanna change that, right? Um, I want my clients to have success right from the beginning, but I, it's not just, Go have success. It's 
very specific things, action steps and outcomes I want them to have in an experience I want them to have during that onboarding time, okay? So I want to talk about what my onboarding looks like a little bit, just to give you kind of a picture, okay? So you can start to think about this for yourself. When I, for, so for my onboarding, as soon as someone joins the Profitable Entrepreneur Program and they, they make the payment, they sign their agreement, the very next thing that happens is they're put into a 30-day onboarding boot camp, okay? It is exactly what it says it is. It is an onboarding boot camp. Yes, we get their payment. Yes, we get a contract. Yes, they can enter the Facebook group, the client-only Facebook group. Um, and yes, they can get on coaching sessions. Um, they don't get the curriculum, the main curriculum for the program. They don't get that. Um, they're not doing that. The first 30 days, and this is where I see so many entrepreneurs, you want to give them everything in their first email. You're like, welcome, and here's 30 things I need you to go do, or 30 things you have access to, and people from the beginning are, are overwhelmed. If you overwhelm your clients within a half hour of them being in there within that first 24 hours, chances of them actually using your program and showing up, they're slim to none. You're going to see people buy your program and never show up. And it's because that first experience was not there. So in the first, as soon as someone joins our program, there's a 30-day onboarding boot camp. I do this and we have it structured the way we have it for very, very specific reasons. So 30 days, you might be like, well, what the heck are they doing for 30 days? They're not getting the actual program they signed up for. The 30 days is basically me taking what I think out of my big curriculum, what parts of it do I think, like one part or maybe two, no more. Do I think if I put them in that first and I have them spend time on that, would that get them a result in my program right away? So when you think about your program or your offer or your process, how you work with your clients, it's multiple things, right? It's like probably five pillars, six pillars, eight, I don't know what you have, right? But it's probably multiple things you teach them and do with them and multiple steps you have them do. What you want to do when you think about your clients is you want to think about, okay, yes, I'm going to teach them all of this, but that's over the year. Do they need to know all of that or do all of that to get a result in the first 30 days, the first two weeks? You don't have to do a 30-day onboarding. You could do two week onboarding. You could do a one week. You could do uh, a 48 hour. I don't care what it looks like that. You have to figure out how much time they need to get the result, okay? How much time do they need if you were to pull out just one thing or two things from your main curriculum and you said, hey, new clients, I'm gonna put you in this space first. This is our onboarding process. Every client has to go through it. You're gonna spend X amount of time here and there's one thing or two things that we're going to do during this time. And this is going to get you the biggest, best result in the first X days, right? Then we come into the main curriculum, okay? When you're thinking about that process, you have to think about the quick win. A quick win is not, you know, it doesn't have to be money. It, you have to figure out, it's, it's according to your niche, what results does your client want? What one outcome does the majority of your clients want? Give them that or give them a piece of that within the first 30 days, um, within the first week, within the first 48 hours, okay? Each of you need to look at who your clients are, what your specialty is, the, out, the one promise outcome, that you get your clients, not the 10, the one. And then you need to figure out how can we help them get that or get some of that immediately upon joining the program before we put them into all of my stuff. How can we do that? What would they have to do inside my process, my curriculum? What one or two things would they absolutely, like if you did nothing else, you would just do these things right here. What are those things? Or what is that thing? Put that in an incubator where you tell every single client who joins, this is what you'll do first. And once we get you to this outcome, we're going to move you into the main curriculum. 
Okay, I'm going to share what mine is here in a second, but I want you to understand why this is critical. Um, this is important because if you just put people in your curriculum, the, the chances are they're they're excited and they're all over the place and they probably have some urgencies and they're probably going crazy. And chances are you have way too much in your curriculum. When I'm looking at business owners' curriculums, like their programs and the trainings that they have um, inside their membership site, nobody could get through that. <laughs> like it is complicated. It's too much. Um, it's a mess. It's unorganized the way it's structured. Um, I can see that it would be very difficult for your clients to actually get results using your curriculum. Maybe they'll get results from your coaching and stuff, but they're not getting any value from the actual curriculum. And that's the skill set that they need, right? Like that is the skill set, the strategy. That's the thing they need. They don't only need coaching. They could get that from anybody. They need to like indulge in your curriculum and master it so that even years after you, they're using it. So if people are joining, they're just grabbing some coaching here and there, and they're not even using your curriculum, they're not even learning your curriculum, there's no value there, right? Like they're not even getting the concept. They're not even getting the goods. They get coaching from anybody. It's just your methodology. It's your talent that they need to get. And so when clients come into your program and they look at it and they're like, "Woo, they're out, it's really hard to get them back in, right? You'll have to really simplify that. So here's what we do. Again, I am a sales coach. My only and number one focus is that my clients make money in a sustainable, repeatable, scalable way period. In recession, out of recession, in launch, out of launch, all day, every day, all the things. That's my only specialty. That's what I do with a high ticket program, right? That's it. So considering that that's what my clients come to me for. My onboarding process consists of two things, okay? Um, they're going to go through my, my onboarding boot camp for 30 days, Okay. During that 30 days, they're not just sitting there twiddling their thumbs, watching training videos. They're actually implementing. And we are providing the exact steps. We are, we are even providing the action step. We are providing the even the swipe copy, like literally copy, tweak it, obviously, make it your own and go do the action step. So this is almost like a done for you. It is, it's half done for you because you have, you have the action step all created for you on how to do it, which one you should do, and then they have the template. So what we're having them do is they're going to spend 30 days in this incubator, okay? They'll be on the coaching calls for the program and they'll be in the Facebook group, but we haven't added them to the curriculum. They're going to do this first. So they're going to go in and for 30 days, they are going to follow a date couple of steps each day. There's going to be a couple action steps per day that are already done for them. They just need to swipe it, tweak it, and go take the action. Most business owners don't take action. That's why they don't get results. They take the action. They get the results, okay? They're going to do this for 30 days. The point behind and the goal behind the daily action is, number one, they add 300 leads to their audience or to their ecosystem, to their database, in that 30 days. The only people that will not do that will be the people that don't do the work. So the way that we have this structured is it's guaranteed. We've run it for nine years across multiple different types of niches in multiple different types of companies in multiple different types of ways. It is to a science. It is structured and organized to a science to work. Anybody can do them. A good 50 or so percent that go through that, they won't do it. Or they'll do it for three days, or they'll do it for a week, or they'll say, I did three out of the eight, whatever. That's most business owners. And that's why they don't have cash flow, recurring revenue. That's why they're working so hard and they're not getting results. They have no focus, no discipline. They are not focusing. And so we put them through this for that reason. You're going to spend 30 days and we're going to see who can do the daily step that's going to take you like a minute. If you don't have the, if you don't even have the focus and the time span to do one or two things in your business every single day for 30 days straight, how are you going to run a multiple million dollar business? How are you even going to run a six figure business? If you don't even have the discipline or the focus 
to do one or two things every single day consecutively for 30 days. 30 days is nothing. Nobody can, you can even have a baby in 30 days, like running a business and building a business in 30 days. Uh, that's not even a thing. So if you can't do that for 30 days, then what happens, right? Like, so the reason that we do this is because 30 days is, it's not long enough for them to get the max result. It's not, but it's, it's just enough time for them to fall into old habits and to check themselves out of the game. And so what we do is we put people through this because it's intense, right? We want to see, will they do it? Can they do it? Can they do it? And if they can, then they'll get results. If they can't, well, then we have to connect with them and find out if you can't do this, how are you going to do in the program? How are you going to have success in the program if you can't do this for 30 days? And so there, there's a method behind why we do this. And this, I'm sharing this because this is what you need to be thinking. An onboarding process needs to be very intentional. So we have our clients add 300 leads to their audience in 30 days. We give them the step to do, where to do it, how to do it, and the swipe copy. They just tweak it and do the actual action. The reason we're having them do this is because if you operate a business and you're not adding 10, 20, 30 new leads every single day, if you don't have 300 people entering your database um, every, every single month, every single month, you are going to run dry of sales. You don't have to grow your audience, but you're just going to run out of sales, period. Flat out, end of conversation, you will run out of sales, okay? So you have to grow your audience. And we have found that the best thing that helps the algorithm and the best thing that helps you generate a sale a day is 20 to 30 new leads per day. If you do that, the numbers just make sense. Obviously, you have to have other systems and strategy in place, um, which we teach all of it in our Profitable Entrepreneur Program, but you can't have those missing pieces. The numbers just add up though. As long as you have the systems and the strategy, the numbers make sense. They will do their job. Um, most entrepreneurs are not doing this. They're not growing their audience consistently and they're not generating enough qualified leads, right? So that is one part of what we're having them do, okay? And the prompts are challenging because it's making them have to really think and go inward and get clarity and they need to do that. We have to do that as business owners. If you're not clear on what you do, you cannot expect anybody else to buy from you. Um, and so I'm having them do these prompts, but they're also having to do some inner work as they're doing it. And that is challenging. And that is the work we want to see them do because they have to. Not to be successful in my program, but they have to do that. And so if they can't even get through that first 30-day boot camp, they will never make it through my program. And they're probably not going to be very successful in any other program because they're just not doing the work. They're not staying focused and having that discipline. The second thing that they're doing during that time is we are giving them um, our course. It's a crash course. So it's like 10 minute videos or less, 15 minute videos or less, really, really quick. It's like, do this, do this, do this, go. And here's a template, here's a swipe. And this is focused on sales. So it's my sales on demand cash injection campaigns. So aside from growing their audience with leads, which no customers equals no sales, growing their audience by 300, then they're going to sell to those people and to their current audience. And they can do both of these and will do at the exact same time. So in a total of 30 days, they should have 300 people, new people added to their database, database being your ecosystem, your email list, something like that. They're going to have those 300 people. And they're also going to generate sales. Now, most of my clients are generating anywhere from 20,000, 50,000 and up towards like 80,000. I think 82,000 was the most in that 30 days. The, de the dependent on that is the price of their offer and how well they can sell it. That's up to them. That's a practice, but they are generating sales. They are generating sales and they're learning a new set of strategies that they can continue to use throughout my program while they're with me um, in between some of the other things we're doing. They can continue to do those to get better at them, right? The more you do something, the better you get, right? So I teach my clients the power of one, get masterful at one thing. If you're not making um, 100,000 a year to 200,000, don't fuck with the funnel. 
that's, I'm just going to say like, you shouldn't be doing funnels. You shouldn't worry about a website. You shouldn't be building sales pages. You shouldn't be trying to set up any technology at all. You should be having sales conversations and selling, growing your audience and selling. That is all you should be doing. If you're not even generating hundred thousand dollars a year, um, you shouldn't be trying to automate anything. There's nothing to automate. Right. Um, so we're teaching our clients the very simplified way, but we're showing them this is the correct path, right? Um, this, is, this is the path that's going to keep you sustainable and scalable for years to come. Anybody can go make some money and have a quick win, and it's short-lived, right? And we see that all the time. Oh, I made money here, but then boom, I've been broke for six months. That, that's because you don't have these things in place. You're just chasing a shiny trend or you're launching to death very randomly when you need sales. Those are not strategies, right? Um, and that is why revenue is like this, right? Um, so during that onboarding process, that's what they're doing. Now we have goals, we have benchmarks we want people to meet, but the goal there is not like, I want you to make this much money. It's, I want to see this progress. I want to see that you can do it and do it consistently and do it imperfectly and don't bitch and don't complain. Do the work right? CEO time, do the work. Um, we want to see them have progress. So, you know, if they go through that 30 days and they're not getting any results at all, they're definitely not doing the work at all. They're lying if they say they are, right? And people do that. Um, they will have results they, in, in multiple ways, audience-wise, sales-wise, but also internally, growth, consistency, stuff like that. We need to see, and you should want to see, that your clients can be successful in your program before they get in your program, right? Like you don't wanna put someone in your program, come to find out they don't have up here <laughs> what it takes to, or the sophistication level to come into your program and have success. They're too dependent on you to get them results because they have all this urgency and they're skipping the important stuff of business. That's why over 90% of businesses don't make it. They, they're not profitable at all. They cannot sustain a recession. They can't sustain economic crisis. They can't sustain not launching. They can't sustain if they had to take time off for whatever reason, that their business plummets. This is why. And so when your clients go through an onboarding process that you feel is building them to where they need to be, so you have their focus and they're excited to learn your actual program curriculum and they're excited to come spend some time with you and they can focus and they're really all in because heck, you just got to help them do whatever during this little period of time, which blew their mind. They're, uh, they're so much more likely to show up for your curriculum, show up for your coaching, do the work because they trust you. They're like, shit, you just proved it. Like, I'm in. They trust you. And then they're going to continue to go through your program. And because of that energy and because that's what they're doing, that intention, they're getting the results. So now they want to renew. Now they want to ascend into your other bigger, higher level programs. Now they want to tell their friends about you. Now they want to give you testimonials and reviews that are going to sell the whole program for you. They want to refer people and help you. And they want to stay with you. All because this little period right here. Now, obviously, when they're in their program, it can't go to shit. You have to continue to do that throughout the program. Keep it really simple and easy for them to come in and get results. Now, I do want to say this. It is not your job as the, the leader or the coach or the influencer or the service provider to get anybody anything. Like it's not your job in order for you to get your client's results, like for you to do it for them, you have to go to their house and you have to pick them up out of bed and put their fingers on the computer and actually do the work for them. We can't do that. It's not our responsibility, but it is your responsibility as the program facilitator, the influencer, the leader, the expert, and, the, and or the coach or consultant. It is your job to set them up for success. And that is the systems that you have in place that your clients are going to go through in their time with you. It's not just about giving them a bunch of content. In fact, don't give them very much at all, but it is the organization of it. It is the order you put it in and what is, what is their result for each thing they're doing? Because if there's not steady progress, if they're not getting something out of it, they don't see the value. They're going to stop showing up and then you're not going to get those outcomes, right? So once my clients go through that boot camp, that 30-day period, and I have it set at 30 days because 
Um, it's going to take them three to four weeks to get 300 new people in their audience. And even if they have an audience, I still want them to do that because you have to be doing that. And you need an organic lead generation or client acquisition strategy. If your only focus right now is I get my leads from ads or whatever, if you're not doing high level um, organic lead generation, strategic partnership, uh, referrals. If you're if you're not doing that in your company, uh, you might want to start doing that starting today because it is it's not even safe. It's actually extremely dangerous to rely on algorithm from social media in advert paid advertising on Facebook to acquire new leads all the time. That is not a long term sustainable strategy because you don't own those and those are rapidly changing and hard to keep up with and they're not always going to be here. So on top of whatever else you're doing, because those are fine. But on top of that, you need a strong organic lead generation strategy in place. So I have my clients um, spend in that 30 days because I want to see that organically you can grow your audience by 300 people. So if you lost Facebook advertising today, if everybody in the world lost Facebook advertising today or all paid advertising, would you know how to acquire new leads? That's why I have them doing that. It's also a delegatable strategy. So once they're making a certain amount of money, I'll show them how to hire a social seller to take it over for them. So this isn't something you do as the CEO for very long, but you need to know how to do it before you can give it to somebody else to do, right? So we teach them a skill set, okay? A strategy and a skill set. Um, and then we also want them to make money during that 30 days. So once they're doing that, that, once I see, okay, we've gone through the 30 days and there's progress. Once we see that, then we will invite them and add them into the main curriculum where now we can start learning the full A to Z process. We can take it all full circle. They're not coming in stressed out about money or leads or whatever. Um, they're not coming in panicking or freaking out. They're not coming in confused and overwhelmed and buyer's remorse. They're really coming in like, you've got my full attention. You just proved this to me. Like that was epic. Show me the way, right? And so you need to think about you need to think for your clients, again, to your niche and to the result or the one outcome that your ideal client wants, you need to think about an onboarding process that can deliver that in a short, easy, 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 easy time. Like give them the thing to do. Make it so easy that a 12-year-old could come and do it. I've got my system down. So like my 15-year-old daughter, she doesn't know anything about any of this shit, but she could do it because it's just so mapped out. It's like done for you. You want to think that experience needs to be incredible. If they're overwhelmed, stressed, and they can't even get through that, they're going to be like, oh my God, is this what your program is like? Because I just can't do it, right? And they're going to feel like they're already behind. So you want them to come in and get a quick win and some kind of result. It doesn't have to be money. That's what I do because I'm a sales coach. If you are doing something different, then you should know as the expert you are at what you do, what is the main, main, main thing? If you had to pick one thing, what is the main thing that every one of your clients wants? And I have my clients get, get clear on this. It, we call it your one promise. It's the one result, transformation, or outcome that every single client, every single one of them coming into your space to work with you wants to accomplish that you help them get to. Most entrepreneurs, over 90%, cannot get clear on that. And they're like, well, I help them with this and I help them with that. And they're all different. All my clients are different. If all your clients are different, your marketing is bad. You're not acquiring the right leads. If it's all over the place that you can't even say, here's the one thing I help you do. Okay. If I go to my hair salon, uh, they're going to do my hair. I know that because it says it, right? If I go to my grocery store, I'm buying groceries. I'm not going and buying groceries and picking out a dog at the pet store. I'm buying groceries. It's a clear sign over the door. I know exactly what I'm getting when I go in there. I know what I'm going there for and I know what I'm going to walk out with. And if you think about that, about anything you do outside of the online space, it's clear like that. You know exactly what you're going in to get and what you're coming out with. Because it's the same thing for every person going in there. It's that crystal clear, right? That's what you want to think about. You can add layers and things like that when you learn how to get to a million dollars. If you can't even get to like 500,000 in your business a year, easy, and you don't have a strategy for that. If you can't even do that, 
how are you going to sell multiple tiers of things? Because every different offer is a new business model, which requires entirely different effort. It requires an entirely different set of strategies and effort. So every time that busy entrepreneur up here, the squirrel brain is like, let me create this. Let me sell this. Let me add that. I'm going to do this course. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a funnel. I'm going to do automation. I'm going to do passive. I'm going to do live. What, like when you're doing that, that all requires so much that your energy is so sp is spread so thin, you can't even do one thing successful. So the power of one is critical. And it is for your clients also. Your clients don't expect to come in your program and have 50 different results. They just want the one and then they can renew to have another one or they can ascend to have an entirely different up-leveled one. But coming into one space, you don't need to be like everything, right? Because then there's nowhere else for them to go and they probably can't even get through that successfully, right? So they're not gonna stay with you long enough to get the full transformation because they were so overwhelmed just trying to get through the first time, okay? Now, I do wanna say, you are gonna have some clients that just don't do the work. They come in your program and they do exactly what they were doing before they joined your program, which was spinning the wheels, dabbling, bouncing from one thing to another, no focus, no consistency, and they're not coachable, meaning they might show up and they might ask you questions, but then they don't do what you tell them, right? Or they might be in your, your curriculum, but they don't go in it. Therefore, they're learning nothing, right? They're not even doing the work. They're not even learning it, let alone do it. So that means they're going in your program and they're just doing what they were doing before they came to you. Sometimes this is the structure, but most of the time, I would say, I would say 50, 50, 50% 50 of the time, the coach, the leader doesn't know how to lead the program. But the other 50% of the time, you can be the best leader in the world and you're still going to have clients who do that. And it's how they've operated. It's not something that they developed being with you. It's how they operated before they even came to you. Um, and so again, you are going to get some of that, but, but by putting proper systems in place, starting with a really good onboarding process, you start to eliminate that and you can pick them out of the crowd faster. So if you have people that go through your onboarding process and right away, you're like, uh-uh, uh-oh right? Like we let the wrong person in or they're not going to be successful. They're not ready. They're not ready. Instead of getting them into your whole program and then having to take them all out, you, they never enter it to begin with. They go through your onboarding process. And if you right away, you know, and you will know that they just don't have it and that they're going to be difficult and that they're not going to follow directions and they're not going to do the work, which means they're not going to get the result. And you're going to have a hard time and have to work really, really hard, harder than them, because you're trying to like get them to do the thing and they won't. They're fighting you on that with themselves. You'll know that right away. And then you can have the conversation that this is not the program for you right now. Here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm seeing. And here's what I'm going to recommend and suggest for you next. And if you can go do that, then come back and we'll talk about this. And what you'll see nine out of 10 times. Those people will not take your advice. They will go continue doing what they're doing and you'll never hear from them again. You might have like one out of those 10 that are like, I'm so sorry, it was just so much, whatever. Like, and later they might go have, some, they might follow your process and come back way later with like, hey, I was able to get myself grounded. I did the things I'd like to reapply. I think I'm ready. Um, that barely happens though. Most of the time they were never cut out for it, not because of your program, but because of them, what's going on between the ears, they just don't get focused, right? They want to cut corners and they want the results so fast. And they think I don't have to do what everybody else is doing. Like, I don't need to do that work. I don't need to work hard like that. I want to cut the corners and there's no such thing. I've never heard of it in all my 20 years. There's no such thing. Everyone has to do the hard work and you're always going to work hard in your business because rather you have team or you have this or you have that, you're still working hard to make sure all those things are running the way they need to, right? So your, your hard work looks different as you grow and scale, but you're always working hard, right? That's what we signed up for. So if this was easy, right, like everybody would be doing it. So the onboarding process you want to be thinking about is um, what do you feel is going to give them the best experience quickly that's going to have them feeling like they have momentum, they just have progress, they had a breakthrough of some sort, maybe they got some kind of quick result, and now they're like, they are so bought in 
and they trust you so much. And they're so bought in that you know what the heck you're talking about. Like, you know what you're doing because that was phenomenal. I can't wait to get into the program. What could that process look like? And again, it doesn't need to be 30 days. I explained why I'm doing 30. Um, I could probably shrink that down to a two or three week thing, but we're doing, giving everyone space and opportunity to prove that they can do the work, right? To themselves, to me, to each other, that they can do this. So we're stretching it just like by a week and giving them instead of three weeks, four weeks, right? And then they enter the program if they can do those things. And we're not saying like, oh, you did all of it perfect, you're in. We're actually looking for the imperfect action. We're looking for the people that are like, this is really hard for me and I did it. Um, we're looking for the people that are like not complaining and they're like, hey, I, I did it anyway, right? Imperfect. And we're looking for the people that do it every day with no excuses, right? Because if they make excuses as to all the reasons they couldn't do what you asked them to do in that onboarding, what do you think it's going to look like in your program? Excuses. They're going to do the same thing over there. And so the thing is, is like most people will say the biggest excuse is I don't have time. I didn't have time. I got so busy. Let me just tell you a quick thing about time is nobody has time. Nobody has time. There is not enough time in day for anybody to do all the things that we need and want to do. Nobody has time. Billionaires don't have time. It, it, what the difference, we all have the, the 24 hours a day. Everybody. The difference is that it's in how you're using that time. It's the discipline and the focus. The reason that over 90% of entrepreneurs have no time is because of the things they're putting their time on. It's the, the things they're spending their time doing. It's all the wrong things, um, especially for this stage of business. And that's why they feel like I have no time. My thing that I'm going to instill here with you guys that I'm constantly reminding myself of and bringing down to my clients every day across everything we do is if you're looking or waiting for time, if you are waiting for more time, you're going to wait for the rest of your life. You might as well quit your business right now. There's never going to be a fairy that's going to come down and be like, I'm going to grant you extra time. Nobody else in the world has it, but here you go. You're never going to just like find time. There's no extra time available to find. You have to make it. And that is a CEO mindset right? A struggling entrepreneur thinks this way. I don't have any time. There's not enough time to get it all done. And I have no time. And oh my God, I didn't get it done for the last five weeks because I was like stressed out and I was doing all these things and building my website and like all this stuff. And yet I have no money. That is the struggle in entrepreneur. The focus CEO is disciplined with, I only put my time and focus on money-making activities that propel my business forward that offer me growth and scale. And if it doesn't fall in that bucket, I don't do it. And that's every day, day after day. A CEO does not think like a stressed out, struggling entrepreneur who's frantic checking a checklist, right? That's a struggling entrepreneur. That's a hustler. And that is usually someone that's doing way too much and spreading themselves way too thin. The CEO has only three things on her desk every day. Grow my audience, nurture them and build relationship and sell solutions. Done, done, and done. And then yes, you lead your team. Right. But like you're not trying to like check 100 boxes every day um, and, and be scattered up here. You're very, very, very focused. Right. You're very, very focused. So I share all of this, guys, because I, I really hope that you will think about um, what this needs to look like for your clients and also what is going to be the most beneficial to give them that experience. Right. Um, and again, a lot of times, yes, we want you doing the other things. We want you to grow your audience. Um, you need to serve your clients. So of course you're doing client delivery and you want to be improving all of that stuff. And yes, you're going to be, uh, putting out content and doing things like that on social media. But at the end of the day, it's like, you will do that for the rest of your life and never have money to really hire a team that can do that for you because you don't even have it down because you're so spread so thin because you're constantly replacing clients. So you, you never have enough cash flow. You never have enough recurring revenue because you you don't have any clients that stay with you or refer to you or renew with you or ascend. You are constantly replacing, 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 which makes you feel like you're selling, launching, selling, launching, chasing, chasing, right? Like there's no getting ahead. This is why you have to understand that clients are not just gonna like refer and renew and ascend because you're awesome. 
I cannot tell you in the past how many of my clients have had the biggest, best results, half a million dollar years with me, easily, repeatedly. They're still doing it now. They're still following the same process. It had nothing to do with me. It was that the, the program did not provide the next level that they were looking for because I didn't talk about it and I waited too long. And so they went out and they found it somewhere else. You have to understand that even if your clients are having results and they love you, that does not mean they're going to stay with you. So you got to build relationships so that you know your, your clients better than they know themselves. You know what they're going to want next. You can think ahead for them and include that in your process. But all of this starts with your onboarding because if they don't have a good experience within the first 48 hours with you and then continue to have a good experience and see steady progress, right? There needs to be steady progress. If your clients are not experiencing that, they're not going to renew, ascend, refer, or anything, let alone probably even finish a program, right? Somewhere, probably around the first half of it, they're out. Even if they're still paying you, they're out. They're not doing it. So you have to set these systems up. I can't say how critical it is. I would say equally as important as your client acquisition, so your audience growth strategy and your sales strategy. I would say that this is equally right up there with it um, because if there, if we all had to start over in our businesses, I would put more money on referrals and strategic partnerships with clients in your audience um, and higher level partners, I would put more money on that being a, a massive success driver than just going in Facebook groups and growing your audience and filling a funnel. Okay. And that's phase and that's, that's going to phase. It's a trend. Um, people don't want to be put in a funnel. They know when they're being put in a funnel. They know when you're sending an email that is not personalized for them. They know when you're just stuffing them in something and pitching them like you are everybody else. They know that. We know that. We feel that. We know it. We all know when we're being put in it and nobody likes it. So if there's not this level of human connection and building relationship and making sure you're, you're really putting the right people in your program so they get results, right? Helping them build the skill. You might have some people that will come in and struggle a little bit, but help them build that skill to your ability. And then after that, it's, it's up to them, right? I hope this was helpful. Does anyone have questions? Um, if you have a question, type in the chat, or um, if you're on live, you can also just um, pop in, but Share if you have any questions. While we're doing that, I do want to let you guys know if you're listening to this and you're generating probably 50 to 100,000 somewhere around there in your business, maybe like maybe even 40,000 or 35, 40 or 50,000, probably I would say the minimum. And you really want to take your business to the next level this year. And you want to have the right systems and structure for scale, for sustainability, for profitability, for, you know, uh, sales on demand cash flow, like regular cash flow and recurring revenue. Um, and maybe it means you need to build all that. Or maybe it means you have some of it and it's just redesigning some of that. Um, we are taking applications for the Profitable Entrepreneur Program right now, which is a 12-month sales incubator. It's actually a multi-year program if you choose to stick around and renew, um, but it is a year-long program and we are literally helping uh, coaches, CEOs, and done-for-you service providers. We are helping you build high-end programs, whether that be a high-end one-on-one boutique or you want to do a high-end one-on-one signature group program um, We or an agency if you're done-for-you. Um, we are helping you get to 500,000, so half a million dollars a year of repeatable, recurrable, delegatable, sustainable revenue in one of those models that you want to be in. Um, and we're helping you put the systems in place that stand the test of time when it comes to economic crisis, when it comes to algorithm issues, technology issues, recessions, which we have one coming right up that's going to last about a year or two. Um, we are helping you build systems, results, um, and um, strategies within whatever your business model is so that you can sustain those things and so that you can help your clients sustain because if they're not winning, they're out, right? So that means every time a client leaves, you lose money. Um, so this is a win-win and this is also a partnership, right? You need to be willing to go all in for your clients uh, more than you are focusing on your own goals and your own agenda. You have to actually care more about your clients. Um, they're them having success and progress, right? Um, if all you want is just your own stuff, like I want my own results, my own money, my own sales, and that is my main focus and only focus. And I don't really care about anything else. 
your business is not going to sustain very long because even though we have a lot of opportunity with other people, uh, people also want human connection and they want to invest in community, co-creation. They want to have an experience. Um, they want to feel like they're not a number in your program or just a person. Um, they actually want to have a relationship with you. They want to know that you're genuine. Um, they want all of that stuff. And so if we're not doing that, uh, as we head into the next recession and with all the people in the online space, um, this is the one thing nobody else is doing. It's the one thing nobody else is doing. So you should be doing it because that's what's going to help you stand out. A huge reason why I stand out and I will have people choose me who have never even met me before over people they've been following for years. They'll pay me in full, enjoy my programs and have great results. And the reason that they do that is because of the experience and the relationship they have with me. They have so much know, like, and trust before they even join my program through watching very specific pieces of content or having a relationship and conversation with me or my team in the DMs. And so by the time they're like, I want to buy, they're ready to go. They already know, like, and trust me. And then you put them into a process that just confirms that for them where they're like, oh my God, this is the best decision. This, this, this just sealed the deal for me, this onboarding, Right. And then you get them into your curriculum. Um, if you're not focusing on doing that and all you're doing is like put a funnel together, run leads through it, stuff everybody into an offer, like pitch my program all the time and like not get clear on like, like actually caring about your audience and your clients, the people that are going to come work with you and give you their money. Um, you have to really care about them actually having a good experience with you and having fun and having community and relationships and, and results. And if you're not doing that in 2022 and 2023 and beyond, um, people are just not going to choose you. They're just not going to choose to pay you, even though they might, might want and need what you have and might even want to invest in it. They don't want to because they don't like you or they don't know you or they don't trust you because you're not doing those activities. And all you're doing is inward focus on what you want. And so I want to encourage so many of you today to take a few minutes today and really think about if you were buying your program and if you were the person that you were talking to and connecting with, go look at what you're putting out there. Like if you were your audience, would you click? Would you fill out the application? Would you buy? And I'm going to tell you, chances are a big fat no. If you know you're the business owner that never gets in conversations and you never build a relationship with your leads. That means that you know nothing about them and they know nothing about you and you have no relationship. So there's no like trust factor. Chances of them buying slim to none and you're gonna have to push, 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 right? So I wanna encourage you to take a look at how you're operating as a leader um, because if you don't stand out in this crowded space, you're gonna phase out. Because as this next recession comes, people are going to be looking for the leaders. They're going to be investing in the high level leaders that have their shit together, that are able to provide in a concise, effective communication form. Here's what I help you do. I help this person get this result so they can do this. Done, done, and done. And I have this proven process. And let me show you testimonials. Let me have a conversation with you. Let me share whatever you need so that you know. And if you're not putting more focus on that and all you're doing is like, oh my God, nobody watched my live video I put out. Oh my God, I sent two emails. Nobody even clicked. Oh my God, no one's filling out my application. The thing is, is no one cares about all of that. And when you're doing, and when that's your focus all day, every day, and it, instead it should be, did I grow my audience by 20 people today? And did I build a relationship and nurture them? And am I in conversations with the people in my audience? And are my clients having a fantastic experience? That should be your questions every day. Not like, how come no one is like watching my live video? How come no one's filling out my application? How come no one's buying for me? Oh my God, my sales. Oh my God, my, I got to pay my bills. Oh my God. Like if that's the focus in your energy, your content is going to reflect that. And you know what kind of content people like that put out? pitchy, like unclear, desperate content that everybody ignores. There's way too much good stuff going out. Like that's not the type of content that's going to convert. Okay. But when you are focused on client results and you're focused on nurturing people and building relationships, and you're actually having conversations with the people in your audience, 
you're inspired and you're thinking differently. So the way you the, the way you put out content, the way you say it, the things you do, where your focus and your energy goes every day is much different when you're doing those types of things versus getting up every day and refreshing, 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 looking for your next sale. Those are two different energies. One of them will keep you struggling and probably out of business. One of them is what's going to get you to a million dollars or more, right? And you just need to make the decision, which is up to you. You need to decide what camp you want to be in, the struggling six-figure or under, struggling five-figure, or do you want to be, you know, the smart, savvy CEO who's scaling to millions of dollars and is leading the way that she needs to lead to do that, right? Either, both of them are hard. Both of them are going to be hard work. So you, you're going to put the hard work in either way. If you're going to put the hard work in to struggle and not get results, why not put the hard work in to get the results? Just it's a mindset game, right? So I hope this was helpful. Again, if you're interested in um, just looking at like, what would the journey be for you? What would it look like? What would the path be for you and I to work together and partner together this year? Um, definitely just either send me a DM, comment below, depending on how you're watching this. Um, and I could absolutely send you an application and make sure we get you in the right place. If we can't help you, we have amazing connections. We'll figure it out for you and make sure you know your next steps. Um, just remember guys, we go live here every single week um, for our PETV uh, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us in the Facebook group or um, pop in here on Zoom with us through the email. Um, we'll see you guys all really soon. Talk to you later. Bye.